Well, hello, YouTubers, gold lovers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And time to answer your viewer questions again. To Q and A time. Um, number one question I've been getting lately is, where have you been? There haven't been that many videos released. Um, well, I've been out west on a month and a half long trip out west. Went to a place in Arizona for a couple weeks, a place in Wyoming for a couple weeks, Nebraska fossil hunting for a couple weeks. Just doing all kinds of stuff. Been gone for about a month and a half. Uh, I filmed a lot of videos out there in those places, but I couldn't upload is the problem. So they're trickling out now. They're coming out a couple of weeks, as well as new content I'm generating now that I'm back home. So you're going to see uh, videos on what I've been doing out west, uh, um, stuff in Arizona. Well, actually, I think the Arizona stuff's already out. Uh, stuff in Wyoming, stuff in Nebraska, that's all trickling out. Did the, you know, there's more fossil hunting videos coming out. There's more rock hounding videos coming out. Uh, visiting mines in Wyoming, that's coming out. So stay tuned for that, um, as well as new content I'm generating here now that I'm back home. So it's all going to be mixed together. It's all coming out. So I'm back in business. So for those of you who've been wondering what's going on, that's that's what it is. I'm back in business. So watch for those videos that that came that I did out west to come out. Um, I think you'll find some of them interesting. Although this does segue into another question I get a lot on this channel is. You know, people say, I come here for the gold recovery videos. Why don't you put all this other stuff, the astronomy, the, the lapidary, um, the other stuff you do, why don't you put that on a different channel? And well, here's the thing. I do have a second channel where I do my electronics and retro computing stuff. And I have found that administering two channels is about all I have time for, okay? Um, it gets tedious. So I'm not going to have another channel for the lapidary. I'm not going to have another channel for the astronomy. Uh, and, and that stuff has developed a significant following right here on this channel. So moving it at this point was just going to confuse my viewers. So it's going to stay here. But, you know, maybe you're not familiar with a YouTube feature called uh, Playlists. Um, I do segregate all my videos into different playlists. Now if you just come to my main channel all the time, you're going to see every video on every subject I upload, okay? And if you're just coming here for the gold, well, you got to sort through them to find the gold. If you're just coming here for the astronomy, you got to sort through them to find the astronomy, and so forth. But if you click on that little playlist tab, you'll see all my different playlists. And if you just click on the urban gold mining playlist, you'll only see the urban gold mining videos. You click on the astronomy playlist, you'll see the astronomy videos the lapidary playlist, you see the lapidary videos, that sort of thing. So they are sorted out. So you don't have to hunt through a bunch of videos that don't interest you to find the videos that do. So use that playlist feature. I think you'll find your life is a lot easier. And not just on my channel. I mean, a lot of other YouTube creators sort their videos into different playlists. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to find what you're looking for and not have to sort through a bunch of stuff that doesn't interest you, okay? So, yeah, the travel stuff, astronomy stuff, lapidary stuff, it's still going to come on this channel just, just because I don't have time to administer a half a dozen different channels. But it's going in different playlists, so you don't have to see what you don't want to see, you know? You can go right to what interests you. So give that a try. Okay, another question. Some questions came in while I was on the road. And, well... One thing that came in a couple of times is a little frustrating is how can you call that stannous chloride solution when you didn't put any stannous chloride in it? You know, I have a couple of videos on making stannous chloride solution where I dissolve tin in muriatic acid to make stannous chloride solution. And I guess people who are kind of ignorant of inorganic chemistry are like, wait, you didn't put any stannous chloride in it. How can you call that stannous chloride solution? Well, you know, basic inorganic chemistry here, 101, when you dissolve tin in hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid, you create stannous chloride. That's kind of how it's done, okay? You can buy stannous chloride off the shelf and dissolve it in the water if you want. That's fine. Um, I happen to have tin. In the, I have tin shot, and I have tin solder, and I have gallons and gallons of hydrochloric acid. I have kind of a philosophy 
I'm not buying what I can make myself with stuff I already have. So tin plus muriatic acid equals stannous chloride solution. It's that simple, guys. Um, so yeah, that's why I can call it stannous chloride solution, and that's why it works like stannous chloride solution, because that's what it is, stannous chloride solution, okay? So I hope um, the people who are confused by that see this video, and the next time I make a uh, stannous chloride solution video, I'll be a little clearer on that, that tin plus muriatic acid equals stannous chloride, okay? You don't have to add any to it, all right? Um, I also, while I was gone, I got a whole lot of questions from people, both email and comments and videos. Um, I got this board. What are these parts on it? Or I've got this board. Um, what's valuable on it? Uh, what's this board worth? Uh, what are these parts worth? Which of these parts have gold in them? What didn't come with any of those emails or um, comments is photos of the part that people want to know about. And I have to write everybody back and say, hey, take a picture with your smartphone and send me a photo of it because I have no clue what you're talking about, okay? Your description, people people describe, oh, what's these square things on the board? There's a lot of square things on circuit boards. I don't know, send me a picture, you know? Or, or what are these white things? I, I don't know, send me a picture, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, there's a lot of different components on boards that are square, that are round, that are rectangular, that are white, black, red, purple, whatever. If you want to know a specific ID of something, you got to send me a picture of it because you know, otherwise, just telling me it's 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 square or it's it's white doesn't tell me anything. Okay, so send me a a, a, a picture of it in your email or whatever and I'll endeavor to do my best to tell you what it is and whether it has any value, okay? But you gotta send me a picture, otherwise I got no clue what you're talking about, really. Um, and then mystery boxes. I got a couple of requests for mystery boxes while I was gone. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any right now. Um, I sold off a lot of stuff before I left just to make room because just before I left, I got a big scrap pickup from one of my best clients and um, I knew I was going to need the room. My, my workshop is stuffed to the gills with things right now. I could probably put together some mystery boxes when I get some time. But right now, I just, you know, got back from, you know, the West. I haven't had time to do anything. And, um, yeah, I could probably put some together, but I don't have any right now. Um, I'll try to let you know when I do have some, but not right now. And, you know, I... We've got a very busy travel schedule this year. I'm trying to get ahead on the videos so that the next time I go out of town for a couple of weeks, they don't drop off to nothing like this last time, and people wonder where I went. So, um, but yeah, we're going out of town um, to, the, to the west, going out west twice more this year, and then around December we're doing the southern hemisphere thing where we're going down to Chile, Antarctica, and Easter Island, which I talked about in a previous video. So we got a lot of travel going on this year and more yet to come. So um, I don't know how if I'm going to have have time to put together mystery boxes um, and sell a bunch of stuff on eBay. We'll see. I may get some stuff up on eBay just to try and clear out the shed a little bit. My goodness, I can hardly walk in there. I've got so much stuff. Anyway, um, let's see. MLCCs. Okay, I get a lot of requests for processing of MLCCs, and that is coming soon for those of you who have been really wanting it bad. I um, actually started working on MLCCs with my buddy Jim when I was out in Phoenix. Um, he had a bunch of them. We divided them in half. I took my Mighty Mill with me out there. We ground up his MLCCs into a fine powder using the Mighty Mill, and he was going to start processing them. And he gave me the other half of MLCCs to bring back here to process when I got the time and was back in town. Plus, my buddy Rick sent me some MLCCs. And plus, my buddy Ken has sent me some MLCCs. And plus, I have some MLCCs of my own I've collected. So I've got quite the glut of MLCCs that do need processing. So that's going to be coming soon. Um, I may be starting on that later this week. Uh, it may be a while before the videos come out, but I may be starting on processing MLCCs this week. So those of you who have been asking and requesting that, 
yay. You're going to be very happy about that. Um, also, the tin recovery videos, I started on something before I left. Ah. And um, we'll get more into tin recovery hopefully later this year. Uh, what this contains right here is tin hydroxide. So I had a solution with a lot of tin chloride in it and I managed to turn it into insoluble tin hydroxide. So the next step would be to reduce this to tin metal again. So working on that, um, down the road hopefully we'll get that going. And uh, because the tin recovery, a lot of people are asking for tin recovery, how to recover their scrap tin, um, how to recover their waste, how to recover tin from their waste because tin's gotten so valuable. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I did put out a video not too long ago about tin recovery. And I'll put a link to that video in this one right now, up in the upper right. And I think there's going to be some more videos on tin recovery down the road. I just got to perfect the process and then I can film it. Okay? Unless you guys want to see another blooper reel. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of mistakes and errors that go into perfecting a process before. I get it working good enough to film it sometimes. And uh, let's see what else. Okay, um, how am I doing on the on the grindings, the motherboard grindings from Mount Baker Mining and Metals that I was working on? Well, to be perfectly honest, I haven't done much with it lately. I kind of hit a wall with that. I had some ideas on how to go forward, but um, really not making much progress with it. And, you know, Jason just put out another video. Um, he ground up a bunch more boards and stuff, and ran the stuff through a shaker table, got the metal out, and, you know, he's tried several things too, some of the ideas I had he's tried, and really grinding the stuff up and separating the metal out with a shaker table or other sluice or whatever, that's the easy part. Separating the different metals, the copper, the gold, the silver, the tin, the iron, the nickel, that's the hard part, okay? It's hard for me. I've tried several things and haven't gotten anywhere. Jason's tried several things and haven't gotten anywhere. In his last video, he was kind of asking the audience, hey, if you've got any ideas, let me know. Well, you know, if you have any ideas, let me know too. Because I've still got a bunch of those Mount Baker Mining and Metal Grindings in there. Plus, um, my buddy Rick in Georgia has sent me um, what he calls crumbs from his boards, which look like a lot like the same stuff. So, you know, I'm actually pretty well loaded down on that stuff. I just don't have a good method for separating the different metals. I'm thinking that electro winning is probably the most likely path to making it work. Because between me and Jason, we've tried a lot of different methods of pyrometallurgy and really haven't gotten anywhere. And it's really inconsistent too. Um, I was having seriously inconsistent results with my pyrometallurgy and I was thinking it was something I was doing wrong but then in Jason's last video he's getting pretty inconsistent results in his pyrometallurgy too using the same the exact same starting material the same flux you know he's getting inconsistent results too so it's a very difficult material to work with that that mix of metals it just doesn't behave. So I'm thinking electro winning is probably the way to go. Um, just cast them into bars. Um, just melt that metal down, cast it into bars. Maybe use a flux that will get rid of some of the base metals. Uh, some of the more problematic ones. Cast the, cast the remaining metal into bars. Put them in an electrolytic cell and electrolyte win them away. And uh, the slime should contain the precious metals. Uh, It'll still be difficult because those slimes are going to contain some base metals too, like tin, that are going to give you problems when you're trying to refine the precious metals out of the slimes. But still, you're going to get rid of 95% or more of the base metals that way. So I think electro winning is the way to go. It's the most likely path to success in my mind. And when I get around to working with the Mount Baker Mining and Metals grindings again, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to try and cast some bars that I can put in my electrolytic refining cell, and we'll see if we can uh, see if we can make that work. See, we'll, we'll, we'll get should get some pure copper out of it, and we should get a lot of slimes that contain the precious metals, and unfortunately, some other base metals that are going to be problematic 
for refining the slides, but should be doable. Famous last words, but it should be doable. So anyway, um, and then one last thing. I was talking about my second channel up here, uh, my channel with the electronics and retro computing stuff on it. A um, lot of new content there. If that's at all interesting to you, check it out. Um, I've got a whole new series that's starting up there, and I've got some other ideas for future videos, too, that are going to be coming out. So, second channel, check that out if you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing. And um, I guess that's it for today. Quick and easy uh, Q&A. So, uh, thanks for sending your questions in. Keep them coming. Like I say, though, if you need specific technical advice on a particular component or board, send me a picture. Otherwise, I really don't know what you're talking about and can't advise you. But other than that, keep your, keep your questions and comments coming. They're very helpful in guiding the path of uh, this channel and what I do in the future. Like, I had no idea people were so interested in tin recovery until dozens of requests for it started coming in. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that sounds interesting, and people want to see it. So, yeah, I'll work on that. So, like I say, keep it coming. And I'll see you in the next video, which should be coming out pretty darn soon. Thanks for watching this one. Bye.